So for me, it's a love and hate relationship. The gimbal floating look is amazing. But it would be even better without the gimbal. That's why in this episode, we are talking about gyro stabilization. In which Sony cameras record data about the movements your camera makes so that later in post-production, the opposite can be applied even when you thought it was impossible. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons, which cameras got it and how and when to use it. <laughs> Yeah, 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 memory. In this channel, I help you with the tech tools to be creative. And today I'm going to be using the Sony ZV-1 as my main camera for this test, but the same techniques apply also for the ZV-10, A7C, A7S3, A7 IV, and all these other cameras that you can see around here that I didn't remember when recording this. Now, as I mentioned before, gyro stabilization is going to use data about the movements of the camera and we'll try to make the opposite movements in post-production so that it looks really stable. Now, funny enough, to enable this on any kind of Sony camera, you don't actually have to go to the menu and enable gyro stabilization. It's always going to be there, except like, for example, 120 frames per second, in which it will not be present. Later on, we're going to talk about Catalyst Browse, the software from Sony that is going to help you stabilize the footage. And inside Catalyst Browse, you're going to be able to see this symbol that means that this footage has gyro stabilization inside it. So before going out and recording, check if the kind of file you want to produce is going to have gyro stabilization with this software. In most cameras, anything below 60 frames per second is going to have it. Okay, so let's get already with the pros and cons, beginning with the pros. And the first one is very obvious. The stabilization with this technique is insane. Besides being super fast to apply, this is going to allow you to have so much freedom to walk around your subject, to make moving shots, even if your subject is occupying almost all of the frame like my head in this shot. So this is perfect for vlogs and run and gun situations. And actually, those are the pros. Let's go to the cons. Now, the first one is that you have to use high shutter speeds to make it work right. And there is no precise value for me to tell you because it depends also on the amount of motion that you have in your footage. So to test this, I just picked the most simple situation that I think most of you guys are going to find yourselves in at some point, which is walking with the camera towards a walking subject. And in this situation, until 1 over 250 was perfect. 825th of a second was okay, but below that was total trouble. And this brings two problems. The first one is that if you want to use this technique at night, it's going to be much more complicated with the high shutter speed. And the second one is that you're not respecting the 180 rule, meaning that you're not going to have natural motion blur in your scenes. You can still add some of it back, like for example in DaVinci, if you go to this motion blur slider, but I didn't find it very easy to pinpoint the exact amount that would look natural. The second con is something that I found out that most tutorials were saying something wrong, but right. Now the thing is, generally, people recommend you to turn off all the stabilization in the camera for you to be able to record gyro stabilization. And the catch is, I found out that this is not actually true, because with the ZV-1, for example, even with active stabilization, I had gyro data in my files. But stabilized footage looked a bit weird. Meaning that if you want to get the best results, you're going to have to be very conscious about it. So you have to choose to use gyro stabilization for that shot, meaning that you're going to have to turn everything off and just hope that you get the framing and the shutter speed just right so that in post-production, it's gonna look good. So this can be a little bit scary to do because on your camera, before stabilizing, the footage is gonna be all jumping around. And if stabilization later on doesn't work really well as you planned, well, then you've lost it. Now, the third thing that you have to know about is that to stabilize the footage, you have to pass it through a software called Catalyst Browse. This is a free software from Sony that you can download using the link in the description. Now, the catch here is that you have to stabilize and export each clip individually. So without batch exporting, it can take quite a long time. Okay, so let me show you really quickly how Catalyst Browse works. It's this thing, kind of like an explorer or finder where you can see all the files. And there's this column showing if you have gyro stabilization or not. In this case here, all of my clips have it, yes. And I'm just gonna go take a look at the first one of them. For example, this one in the coffee place. Now you have this viewer where if you play, you're just gonna see the original file. But if you come down here and you hit stabilize, now you're gonna see a before and after. And if you play again, you can see the massive difference that it makes. Let me play here from the beginning. From having it natural or stabilized on the right. So much more stable, this one here. Now, depending on your clip, Catalyst is going to crop in to try to make these adjustments the amount that he thinks it should. So in this case here it was like 25%. So you're actually losing resolution when you use the solution. 
What you can do to minimize is just coming to menu over here and then choosing the cropping ratio that you want. And then closer to 100% will be more similar to the original, which means you're gonna introduce more shake. And if you crop more, more, more and more, you're gonna have it even more stable than it was in the beginning. But now we don't even have a full HD version anymore here. Now, if you come up here to options, you can enable some things that don't come by default. Like for example, to show thumbnails inside the Explorer view of the software, you can save snapshots to a specific folder if you want, and in JPEG in this case, but the important part for me here was the color management because I shot everything in HLG and everything was looking really weird when I threw it here in Kdate's browse. So I had to choose working color space as log. You have other options also like Rec 2020, S-Log3, Rec 709, and also the preview color space you can put that's Rec 709 or Rec 2020, you can choose. In my case, these were the parameters that worked, but you have to figure out which ones are the ones correct for you. One other really cool thing of Catalyst Browse is that whenever you open a file over here, you can see on the right the metadata. And here you have so much information about the original clip, including which gamma, which color space, things that actually are difficult to find the information in when you're already in Premiere Pro or DaVinci or something like that. Let's take a look at these clips together here. So first of all, we got the camera with no stabilization and the shutter was one over 500. I'm just gonna click stabilize over here and we can take a look at the clip and you see how incredibly more stable is the version on the right. Now this is our version of one over 250 and you can see even by the encounter of the lines here how much more stable is the one on the right and we have a very good clip. So this is one over one to five and as you can see it's much more stable than the original and it just looks pretty good. I didn't see any issues let's go back now this is a 1 over 50 which would be the correct one to use but when you check the stabilization take a look at what happens with the file on the right it's terrible it just looks like there's some shake or there's something really strange going on there in the middle now this is stabilization active which crops a little bit on the zv1 and then let's see the same thing more or less. There's like this small micro up and down micro shakes that I really don't like. Now this one is active stabilization on the gimbal. And as you can see, it's really good, this one. Looks like the gimbal really absorbs a little bit this up and down movement, which is just enough to make it look so good like this. Now this is with the gimbal, but without any kind of stabilization applied, now just with the Catalyst Browse applied to it. And as you can see, walking on clouds. It's so good, this one. And this one is with the gimbal at 1 over 250. And it seems just perfect. Okay, so let's say you like this version, you already adjusted here in the manual how much crop do you want for this scene. It's time to export your file. So I'm just gonna go here to this arrow and it's gonna ask me where do I wanna throw this footage. I'm just gonna put in the same folder that I had selected before. It's gonna tell me some details about this file and there's gonna be a transcode setting over here in which you can actually make it stabilize the footage but still preserve all the color and gamma information from it so that you can color grade later. And then it's gonna ask you what you wanna do with this and then there are many choices like output color space, you, you can leave it as Rec 709 or you can put it for HDR delivery, you choose. Down here you have same as source for the format, same as source for the frame size, for the frame rate, I don't want to change any of these, but this one you gotta pay attention because the render preset actually chooses like a best match, which means that actually it's not gonna be as good as the original file was. So actually this one I prefer to change to 100 megabits per second. And here there are some advanced settings that we're not going to use. And I'll just hit export. It's gonna show me which one is gonna be rendered. I'm just gonna hit okay. And now the job is being processed up here. So you can see it's rendering one file. Now rendering is gone, our file is ready. Let's take a look. And so it took about a minute to export a file of 17 seconds, more or less. All right, so in which situations do I recommend you to use this technique? Most definitely, well, illuminated scenes in which you know that IBIS will not save you and you don't have a gimbal lying around. 
So overall, it is a bit limited, but it's so powerful. And it's already in your camera. You don't have to carry anything extra to have it there. So if you ever find yourself in a situation in which it could save you, well, it's there. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you have any comments, doubts, or if you want me to run any other tests about gyro stabilization, just pop them in the comment section below. Your comments and questions definitely help me to define the next YouTube videos, but if they don't end up here, they're definitely going to end up in the stories or reels on Instagram. So you can check it out there also for some more quick tips and tricks. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao. Hey, thanks again for watching. And if you're a Sony user, check out this video next. There, I'm testing an app called Monitor Plus that is really cool. It allows you to use your smartphone as an external monitor. And I'm using it right now to record myself since the A7 III doesn't have the flip out screen. It's so useful. So I'll see you there. Ciao.